Hello and welcome to Orient Today. My name is John Zubelik and today we are very excited to have a Bubaloonza. Well, who we have here today are the Bubaloonza chicks. We have Alicia, our Bubaloona chick, number one. We have MJ, our Bubaloona chick, number two. And we have Diane, our Bubaloona chick, number three. <laughs> So we're very excited to, to watch their presentation and we hope you enjoy it as much as we do. All right. So what are we doing here? We are playing bubbles. First of all, the Bubbaluna Chicks. You yes. want to know the history. Yes. We yes. started over a year ago and um, one of my entertainer friends challenged me, hey, why don't you get into bubbles? And maybe add in your balloons because we love to do balloons too. So we combined them and we called ourselves the Bubbaloon Chicks because we're three wacky ladies who are crazy about bubbles and balloons. Uh -huh. So it's, <laughs> we have a lot of fun. <laughs> bubbles are great for kids of all ages. And there's all kinds of tricks you can do with them, which we're gonna teach kids at the Orient Center here. What, what MJ is doing is the ladder and basically is just some straws with some shoelaces mm -hmm. and it creates a little wand. So you made this yourself? Yeah. Wow. Lots, all these things can be made by your, at home. At That's home. what makes it fun. And the solutions, there are little secrets to the solutions. Okay. I can't reveal okay. all our secrets. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like uh, seven herbs and spices. Huh? Exactly. Do you want to do some smoke bubbles? Oh. Oh wow. Okay, let's get some. Um, here we go. I need safety glasses. Safety glasses. Okay. Because bubble solution is drippy. <laughs> okay, who's gonna make me a nice juicy bubble? This is just good, clean fun, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I don't need my mouth washed, washed out with soap. Here we go. Let's get a good one. Oh, I got oh, a good wow. one. Whoa. Wow. Let's see if I can do this. Isn't that amazing? Whoops. Whoops. Whoop. I need another try. Man, that's a doozy. Whoops. This is just fast. Whoops. <laughs> wow. I'm not a tipsy. I'm that sorry. That was amazing. And we can also, we don't even need a tool. We can use our own hands to make bubbles. See? Now, Alicia has a rather unique device over here as well. Whoa! See? You just did that with your gloves? Yep. Or your hand. That is oh, a, nor a, mo a normal wand, right? <laughs> it's a V wand. So MJ's using the, um, the hand. Go ahead. I love your outfit. The bubble Thank bubble. you. Do it through your fingers. You get too much stuff in there. Oh my god. You can bounce them. The reason they're not popping is because I got a wet hand. Oh. See, so you can play with the bubbles. You can balance them. Woo! There you go. Good catch. Oh my Good goodness. catch. Make it go back and forth. Woohoo! Wow. Wait, wait. No, that is like there smoke. There we go. In it. Smoke bubbles. Yeah. Whoa! Look. Now, I've heard of Poof. smoke rings, but never smoke bubbles. Oh, I don't want to give her an elbow. <laughs> Good job. Okay, let's try it again. Ooh. I've gotten up to 43 bounces before. Oh my god. That's my world record. <laughs> okay, any day now. <laughs> I don't think we're going for 43 today. 
No time. Oh, Alicia's got something going on here. Okay. Whoa. Wow. Monster bubbles. We can put her in a we bubble. We can put MJ in a bubble? That's another show. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whoa. She can make donuts. Yes, here we go. And the sprinkles are in there too. <laughs> sprinkles? Splashes. <laughs> Woo, go girl. You go. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> wow. That this is, is awesome. We just so you, love it. Do you do parties then? Oh yeah, parties. Oh, corporate, birthday, private, any kind of party. And I understand if someone's interested, they just go to your Facebook page. Yes, the Bubba Luna Chicks. The Bubba Luna Chicks. So Bub that's Bubba Luna Chicks. Bub, B-U-B, and then Baluna, B-A-L-L-O-O-N-A, -O -O -A, yes. Chicks, C-H-I-C-K-S. Mm -hmm. So that's Bub, B-U-B, Baluna, B-A-L-L-O-O-N-A, Chicks, C-H-I-C-K-S, the Bub Baluna Chicks. <laughs> Aren't they just fast? It's a mouthful, I'm sorry. <laughs> You'll get used to it. <laughs> Woo! Everybody has Facebook these days, it seems like. <laughs> and, you, and then you can eat your bubbles. <laughs> oh my God. Let's see. And you're not messy, you're inside and good clean fun. It you is. Don't see that much. You don't see hard no, I don't see anything. But we bring our own drop cloth usually. So we can be inside or out. Yes. We do, we do okay. workshops. Really? Oh, workshop. Who wants to fill my giant bubble with some mini balloons? Oh, what? We Bubbles. Have next. Here. You want to shoot? Okay, you ready? Okay, is this the grand Here finale? Ah, uh, we'll try it. Let's try it again. Okay, just let it get going and let her rip. Okay, we're not in this, the we're right. This. Okay, let me get one. Ready? <laughs> that does not look easy at all. No, I'm, I'm, how was that? Whoops. Wow. It just keeps on making bubbles. These things, okay. Whoa. Bubble Luna. <laughs> <laughs> Bubba Luna Chicks. Bubba Luna Chicks. We have Alicia. Fun for Emily. all ages. This is good therapy, too. I call it bubble therapy. Fun for all <laughs> ages, whether it's a two-year-old birthday party or your great-grandmother. <laughs> Indoor or out. Indoor or out. All year long. Beautiful colors. And then we teach the kids about the science of bubbles, too. Bubble really? Workshop. Yes. It's, it's really... They're it's amazing. art and science to me. I love it. Show them how to make the bubbles from scratch. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is just a wonderful, sustainable project that you do. Mm hmm. Fun, fun. Well, it's been a great. Uh, afternoon having you here today and we are very excited that you took the time to come all the way over here in Lake Orion to be part of uh, Orion today. Uh, we have uh, another guest up shortly. Um, we have a travel series and a history series. So Thank you. stay tuned. We'll be right back in just a few more minutes. The Friends of the Orion Township Library are looking for book donations and volunteers for their next gently used book sale. With the goal of promoting reading, literacy, and lifelong learning, the nonprofit organization began in 1985 and is the liaison between the community and its library. All but a fraction of the money raised by the Friends is donated for program funding, material, and monetary contribution for the library. If you are interested in learning more, please visit orionlibrary.org friends. Hello and welcome back to Orion TV. Thank you very much for listening. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the history of Lake Orion. 
Uh, culture is often known by its history and its attention to culture. So there are two prominent uh, citizens over time that uh, many of you may have heard of or may not have heard of. Uh, one is um, Paul Scott, who was commissioned by the uh, Lake Orion Library Board to write a book, a very fascinating book. And you can uh, get this book at uh, the Lake Orion Library on your own if, if you want to go into more detail. And there was an, also another gentleman who had a column in the newspaper, uh, uh, the gentleman by the name of James Ingram. And uh, he did a lot of research and he was pretty well known throughout the community for his um, knowledge of history and the support of the, uh, uh, the, the historical um, archives of the community itself. But um, to, to dig a little bit into detail about the history of Lake Orion, located right where we are uh, at uh, Orion and Joslin Road was part of the Saginaw Trail. Now the Saginaw Trail was an Indian trail that many people may or may not be aware of, but the um, theory is that there's possibly no settlement here, but they have found burial mounds uh, at Ball Mountain Recreation Area. Now, um, what's interesting about the burial mounds is that they could either be from the uh, Hopewell Indians who existed uh, between 400 BC and 700 AD, or the Mississippian who existed from 700 to 1500. Uh, not enough research has been done, but uh, that's, that's something that I found fascinating about our community here in Lake Orion. Uh, and then as we move forward, uh, the um, settlers that originally came to town were, it was kind of interesting how it, it all uh, it came about. So there was um, uh, basically um, Congress authorized the first uh, credit sale of uh, public lands in the Northwest Territory in 1818. And Moses Allen on the, it was the first in both uh, Lake Orion and Oakland County to, um, to, to attempt to make a purchase of property on October 24th, 1818. So this was near Gingoville, and it was um, uh, basically a quarter of a section, which is 160 acres. So his responsibility for the credit sale was $2 per acre, or $320 for a quarter of a, of a, of a section, which is a large tract of property. But he didn't make good on his payment and lost it. And then later on, uh, Judah Church and John Wetmore uh, started the first settlement between 1824 and uh, 1826. Um, the Erie Canal was being completed about this time. If um, Many of you probably know about a little bit about the Erie Canal, if not a lot. But what that meant is uh, a, an easier transportation route from the east. Uh, so we received here in Lake Orion a lot of settlers from New York, uh, New Jersey and uh, Pennsylvania. Um, and later on about this time, Samuel Munson uh, con uh, constructed the first sawmill. And it was kind of interesting if you think back in this era as the, things are so modern today with, with schools, education, uh, you, you just Google something and you know it. Well, back then, uh, education was in uh, the home of Samuel Eaton in 1827. Uh, the children pretty much learned uh, how to, there are four, three R's, the reading, writing, and arithmetic. I don't think they call it anymore, but this was in his living room, and uh, that was the, the first, uh, first basic school. And eventually, um, the Decker settlement in 1927 uh, created a, constructed a new log home, and later the first school was built in 1834. Uh, as things progressed, uh, a sawmill was built and uh, as you all probably well know because of a lot of the festivals on the lake that the Paint Creek was dammed up and it raised and lowered to control the, the mill. But uh, there were more than one um, incidences of it overflowing and flooding and um, causing uh, a great deal of problems. Maybe not to the extent of the recent flooding in um, northern uh, Michigan that happened a couple years ago with the, the dams, but uh, it, was still, it was still a big concern. So these were just some of the, the problems that uh, the early settlers had to face. Uh, the other uh, issues that came about were, um, believe it or not, fires were a major problem. So uh, there were the great fires uh, beginning in 1862, uh, and then in uh, July 19th, 1874, the entire 
business district burned down, made the front page of the Detroit Free Press, and the, all except for one building, the Stewart House. And with the um, railroad uh, and the train being able to move back and forth from Detroit, uh, the, the city was rebuilt the business district using bricks this time. Fires were still a problem and they still ran rampant. And then in, um, uh, the first firehouse was built in 1900. Today you'll know it as the 313 Pizza Bar. Uh, if you ever happen to take a look at that uh, building, if you happen to be going in for pizza or just walking down Main Street, take a look at that building because it uh, was erected in 1900 to protect the city from fires. The, um, the fires, uh, they kept going uh, and another great fire in 1910. And then in 1915, uh, 1915, 1915, the city fathers erected a water tower uh, that they could provide water to put, to put out fires or for whatever uses they needed. And that uh, was maintained and existed up until 1994 when the village of Lake Orion uh, connected with the Detroit water system. The, um, the fires, uh, of course, were, uh, were a concern and that was, um, that was uh, eventually taken care of and um, it, it definitely left its mark. So there have always been um, things that happen, and then there were things that weren't real that happened. For example, the dragon in Lake Orion. That's a, that's kind of a, a, a funny story when you start talking about it, but it probably wasn't for um, the people that uh, uh, were, were dealing with it, especially um, uh, people that were out in their rowboats fishing. Uh, there's a story of... Um, of a, of a woman with her two nieces uh, out on their rowboat and Mrs. Vincent Brown, and this was recorded in the Lake Orion newspaper, she allegedly beat the dragon off with a board and rowed back to shore with the screaming girls. So you, you have to wonder, this dragon, it was quoted originally as 18 feet and then 80 feet. It was covered with scales and had black spots and it was green and it came up with seaweed. Well, as time went on, it came about that a young man named Tut and his brother, uh, they were the Miller family, and they lived in a home right in, on 312 South Broadway. Well, Tut in his boredom sewed together fabric around rings, uh, possibly from a bushel basket we really don't know. And he ran a cord from the island that was across directly from the home with a cable system so he could keep the dragon uh, going up or down. And today, that's still relived as uh, the big festival in Lake Orion with the dragons and the, the boat races. And it's, it's become a, a, a fun uh, a point of leisure and lore. And that's also the name of the, uh, the football team and the basketball team, baseball team, et cetera, with uh, Lake Orion, all the sports teams. So it, uh, it turned into something good, uh, but it was from something that uh, was designed to scare people. And I think the football team might want to scare their opponents. Um, I'd really like to thank you for, um, for listening in today. The, um, the next segment I think you're really going to enjoy, it doesn't involve Lake Orion, but it involves places far, far away. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to Orient Today. Thank you for listening in. And uh, we have a special guest today uh, by the name of uh, Jim Roback, and he has a show called Active Living. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit about Ecuador. And many of you may or may not know, but Ecuador is a country straddling the equator on South America's west coast. Its diverse landscape encompasses the Amazon jungle, Andean highlands, and the wildlife-rich Galapagos Islands. So. Um, 
Jim, uh, why don't you take it away? Tell us a little bit about it. Okay, so we'll start with using a slide presentation. And your first slide on the uh, screen right now was the actual Quito, which is the capital of Ecuador. And we're at about 8,000 uh, feet up in the mountain there. We took a gondola up there. And the next slide is basically, uh, we're going to be riding some horses up there. So we had a, a gacho, I guess. He, we rented these horses for about an hour, and he kind of stuck around up uh, around the top part of the uh, uh, mountain there. So it was, had that to uh, enjoy. And first time ridden, ridden a horse in quite a few years, so I was a little uh, concerned about it. But it worked out real good. They're very docile, so it was pretty good. And um, we're going to go right into the town of Quito. And one thing that was very interesting was to see the children. They're all dressed up real nice to go to school. These are high school uh, kids. They're in town in the capital of Quito. And um, then here's the actual office building in Quito. And it's a very unique building. You can only go up to a certain door that you can look into, but you can go, couldn't go inside. And as you can see here in the next slide, they had a lot of guards protecting because this is where the president basically is uh, housed and basically the government officials. So you never know, you know, in these South American countries with all these uprisings and such. So there's a protection there. And in the square you have a lot of uh, people who do various things. For example, these were guys on stilts. They would walk around and uh, there's about 10 or 15 of them and they're walking the square there. So they were, you know, basically um, entertaining the people in the square there and very enjoyable and so they're very happy people they're smiling all the time and if you look at these some of the indigenous people that live there they come to town they sell many things to earn a living naturally because you know it's a poor country and the thing about them is they're so pretty the women and the children and it's very unique and they're well dressed as you can see here and if you look at these there, there's another lady here on the street there they always wear hats because certainly it's hot out there if you'll notice that the women in South America, they're much shorter. And the reason for that, because the air and mostly the women do all the work, the men don't do anything. So they're carrying a lot of the weight here. And so that's why they're short. And then, like I say, their lungs are much larger than typical women and they're shorter. So, um, but they do most of the work. Unfortunately, there must be a lot of lazy South Americans here. This girl was so pretty, you had to take a picture of her. She was just, just gorgeous, you know I mean? You can see how well she's dressed there and very happy. And like you say, uh, these people are very, uh, very, very happy. They're very, uh, um, very friendly and they'll meet with you and talk to you and uh, various people like that. And they're just super people. Now we're at the middle of the earth. This is why it's called uh, Ecuador. It's the middle of the earth, right at, so we're standing right on the equator here. So you can see the latitude is zero, zero, zero. And we're standing around, the yellow line is actually the, uh, the line that is the equator of, of the world. So basically this is why uh, Ecuador is so famous to come and see where the equator is in the middle of the earth. Um, as you go on, this is the square there where the flagpole is national. This is the uh, building that where we had lunch there uh, while we are tra traveling around this particular area where the equator is. How was the food? Sure. I didn't mean to interrupt, but yeah, how go was ahead. the food? Uh, what was the food like? Very good. Well, I'll show you something. You'll be very interesting here in a few minutes. You'll see something that you won't believe. You say, what? You're going to eat that? But I'll show you that. Uh, this is some of the uh, mountainside that you'll see as we traveled from Quito to go to the hot springs. And uh, so the picturesque and the uh, scenery is just absolutely gorgeous here in Ecuador. Uh, these ladies here, they don't have washing machines, so they're washing their clothes in the river. And this was taken at a place uh, near a lake there, and they're down there washing their clothes. So you'll see this quite often that this is how they take care of their clothes. Uh, here's a woman, she's uh, cooking some food here, these big large chondrils or what do you want to call these big tin bins. And so they do a, a super job and uh, the food we eat was fantastic. So um, typically, you know, most of the countries you go to around the world is that you'll see these markets and you'll have all the fresh vegetables, fruit and everything else. And every day they come to the market to buy their groceries because they don't have refrigerators or anything like that to uh, uh, to keep refrigerated uh, food, so they come to the market every day and buy the food for the next day and uh, go home. Now, here's interesting. Here's your chickens. Again, no, no uh, refrigeration. You see in the truck, in the back of the truck here, they're selling chickens. It's about 100 degrees outside. You say, wow, we're going to eat that, but hey, they survive, right? So I don't know. So, <laughs> so I don't know. It's interesting that uh, this is how they, they transport the, uh, the meat to the market, and that's how they sell it. Um, this is one of the hot springs we went to. I mean, right outside our door of our hotel, you put your bathing suit on, these are hot springs. It's coming down from the mountain. The creek runs right through here, and it's just like a sauna. It's really, really nice just to sit back and enjoy the, the, uh, the, the uh, hot 
springs that are coming down there. It's just a wonderful. Of, and, a lot uh, of natural minerals in there. Yeah, too. exactly. It's good it's for your skin. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, the varied uh, history and the varied uh, uniqueness about the country. Okay, now here's the food. Now, what do you think that is? Anybody want to take a guess? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait and see okay. what you say. It's <laughs> a guinea pig. This is what they eat a lot. They, they raise them and they eat guinea pig, and then it's uh, very delicious. I mean, it's not bad. And then sometimes they use the guinea pigs they have in some of the homes there where they actually make the beer. They use one, of, I don't know if the black guinea pig or the other, I don't know. One of them is not the one they use for the, the beer, the other one, because actually when they make the beer, they actually, I hate to say the word, they spit saliva in the beer for it to ferment and such. So, but it's not bad, but it drinks, you know, it's fermented and all the good stuff. Yeah, this is the guinea pig we had lunch uh, in one of the cities there that we had. Jim, so. Jim, you've just given me a whole new concept of being a guinea pig. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> you want to be you want to be fried, right? <laughs> no, so, I did not okay. want to be the guinea pig. <laughs> uh, one of the things you got to be careful is when you go to different countries that uh, when they serve you food out of the street, you don't want to eat street food because the bacteria, you know, they'll, they'll clean their knives now, but they'll dip it in a, a pail, which is the water could be, you know, infested with bacteria. Now. So never buy anything on a on the street, unless it's cooked in hot oil or something like that, but I, don't eat fresh I, fruit I've or anything. Always heard that. Jim. Yeah, don't ever eat, uh, you know, street market food because it's not going to be good for you. Now, shouldn't you use bottled water too? Oh yeah, it? definitely. Oh yeah, and be careful when you have bottled water that it looks like it's tat, you know, it's sealed, but it cannot be either. So you go, especially in India, they really can fleece you there. So be careful when you buy water that it is truly capped because if it is, then they just fill it with bad water. So you've got to be very careful. Again, another pretty little girl I had to take pictures of. I mean, just so gorgeous, these kids, you know, just unbelievable, just She's really adorable. wonderful. Yeah. Uh, this was one of the resorts we stayed at. It was on the Amazon River. It was up on the top there, and they had a swimming pool and such. And behind that, there was a pottery uh, village and things of that nature. There's a lot of different things there. Uh, this is what, we went rafting on the Amazon River. These are our group there, part of it. Here's a guy who's doing some weaving of carpet, and he's sitting on, on the, uh, basically on the cement there, and he's weaving there. You can see some of the carpets that he's uh, producing and the people who are watching him do this and one of those unique ways of making carpets. So it's, it's very interesting. Uh, then we went for a jungle hike, and these are some of the animals that are in the jungle. Uh, they're basically caged and they're fed very well. This guy eating a banana. This bird, he would follow us everywhere he walked. I mean, this guy, this little birdie was crazy. He just, everywhere he walked, he walked behind us. So he's pretty good. Uh, this is a cheetah back there. It's hard to see him. He's pretty well camouflaged. And, um, but uh, interesting little guy. Another one of those monkeys here. Parrots, naturally, they're all over uh, in this particular country. We had a swing that you could swing way out and all the way back, okay? You can see me way back there where I'm swinging on this rope that goes out in the jungle there. Uh, this is all, now we're down, uh, gonna raft down the river. These um, boats are, boats are just a raft. They're made out of, uh, was it, um, bamboo. They strung them together and then really? running down the river. Oh and my then gosh, there's like Contiki? Well, not even, yeah, kind of. And then <laughs> this, her and this the little young Indian girl were the only ones that jumped in the water. I don't know if there's any Pirani in that river. I'm not sure. It was the there, Amazon there, River. But there, there is. I've been in the Rio Negro. In, oh, yeah. Uh, it, yeah it could be. So I don't know. We jumped in, but I guess Manaus, they said yeah. it was okay. So we did that and got cooled off. Uh, this is a village we visit. This is a, one of the cocoa beans there that they harvest. And um, so he was showing us what they do with it and such. And uh, so it's interesting. Now, this is interesting. They uh, go out and get these hornet's nests and such, and they put these things in this pot, and they burn it. And the smoke from there keeps all the mosquitoes and bugs out of their uh, hut. And it's very interesting. It just smolders, you know, just like we have like citron uh, candles. Citronella? Something like that. Yeah. So this, so they use these things, they burn it, and it burns forever, you know. And so it fills up the whole uh, house that they live in. It keeps all the mosquitoes and other bugs away from the, uh, okay. So and uh, so I'm, used, I'm teaching me how to do a blowgun. Here's a blowgun dart. And here she was making some kind of a paste, and uh, he's again. People Jim, we don't mean to shoot your your show done. down, but we're we're, we've done. got to wrap it we're up. We're done. Where are you today? Give you a quick. Uh, this is just fascinating. Uh, what was your favorite part about that trip? Oh gosh, I mean, just seeing the indigenous people—they're so okay. wonderful. Well, just so wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being with us today on Orient TV, and we uh, we really want to thank you for tuning in and come back and see us for our next uh, next special. Uh, thank you very, very much, Jim. It's just okay. fascinating to hear about your travels. Thank just you. It's fascinating. It's fun, let's tell you. Uh, and uh, we'd like to maybe have you back sometime and talk about, uh, you know, how you got started in all of this. And, we'll do, sure. And your traveling companions that we were talking about at the beginning mm -hmm. of the show. So.